the Colonel's lady. The Peregrines were having breakfast. Though they were alone and the table was long, they sat at opposite ends of it. George Peregrine was, as usual, comfortably absorbed in his times when the butler brought in the morning post. Oh, tell Summers I shall want the car at 11. I'm going to the agricultural show. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, let me open it for you. You know I hate to see people cut string. Same. What on earth do you want six copies of the same book for? Hmm. Poetry. Though Pyramids Decay by E. K. Hamilton. E. K. That's your maiden name. You don't mean to say that you wrote it? Yes. What, poetry? Uh, yes. You never told me. You are a sly boots. I didn't think it would interest you very much. Would you, uh, would you like a copy? Well, uh, poetry's not much in my line, you know, but yes, I would like a copy. I'll take it to my study and look at it. Nicely got up. Quite like a real book. Must have cost you quite a bit to get this printed. I was lucky. I sent it to a publisher and he took it. In fact, he paid a small advance. Twenty-five pounds. You don't say. Really? Bless me so. Bannock to see you, sir. Oh, show him in. Oh, good morning, Bannock. Good morning, Colonel. Well, I've got those forms for your new barn. There are some details you'll have to fill in. I put pencil crosses against the questions that you must answer. Thank you, sir. Have you got time to look at that bull, sir? Well, uh, no, not today, I'm afraid. I've got to be at the agricultural show at half past eleven. And it's the county committee this afternoon. Well, if you're going by the lane, sir, it'll only take five minutes. <laughs> oh, all right. We'll have a look in on the way to the show. I will have to be quick. Uh, thank you, sir. Come along. Good morning, Bannock. Good morning, madam. You off now? Uh, yes. I'm just going to look at this bull that Bannock wants to buy before I go on to the show. Will you be back for tea? Uh, no. It's the county agricultural committee. Look, uh, don't wait dinner for me if I'm late. No, all right, then. Oh, just a second. Uh, Evie. I, uh, I read your book. Already? Yes, got down to it right after breakfast. Didn't take long. <laughs> there isn't much of it, is there? No, not very much. <laughs> a bit of a swizz charging eight and six for that. Oh, it's only 80 pages. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like it? Hmm? Well, oh, again, yeah, jolly good. <laughs> not quite my stuff, you know, but jolly good. I'm glad you liked it, dear. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Goodbye. George, how are you? Oh, I'm very well, thanks. We were only talking about you this morning. Or rather, about your wife. My wife? Yes. By Jove, what a success. I've never read such notices for a book of poetry. Didn't know you read poetry. No, I don't myself. My wife does. She belongs to one of those book societies and gets all the new stuff. Yes. She got your wife yesterday. Read it in a sitting, said it was magnificent, but, uh, well, hardly suitable for children, if you know what I mean. What the devil do you mean, sir? What do you think about it yourself? How do you know my wife wrote it anyway? Girl in Boots Library told my missus last week. 
It's in the Telegraph today. I've just read it. Yes, here it is. The name of Catherine Hamilton conceals the identity of Mrs. George Peregrine of the Manor House, Langley, Warwickshire. She is the daughter of the late General Sir Richard Hamilton, who will be remembered for his gallant defense of Noreen in the Second Afghan War. <laughs> Not a mention of you, old boy. Seriously, what do you think of the problem? Well... <laughs> do you know, I... I don't believe you've read it. If you were chairman of seven committees, president of three clubs, and goodness knows what else, you'd know why I don't get time for poetry. Hello, George. Hello, my dear. I began to think you weren't coming. I'm sorry, Daphne. I've had the dickens of a day. Been on the bench all morning. One of those beastly husband and wife cases. Went on for hours. I missed the train and had to come up on the four o'clock. Then you obviously need a drink. Well, what should we do? Would you like to have supper at Mario's and then go on to the Milroy? Mm, that'd be nice. But don't let's stay out too late. All right. Have you been? Lonely. I'm sorry. I just couldn't make it last week. I'm a busy man, you know. Too busy. Never mind. We'll make up for it tonight. All right. As it gives you. Oh, by the way, is it your wife who's written that book they're all talking about? What on earth do you mean? Well, a man I know, he's a critic, took me out to dinner the other night. And he had a couple of books with him, you know, review copies. So I asked him to give me one to read. But he said, oh, no, you wouldn't like these. They're poetry. Hmm. Well, I'm not much of a hand at poetry in the ordinary way, so I told him he could keep them. However, just as he was going, he seemed to change his mind, and he said, well, you might like to try this one. It's damn good, and it's selling like hot cakes. Do you know he was absolutely right? I just couldn't put it down. Who's it by? A woman called Hamilton. But my friend said her real name was Peregrine, and I said, well, that's odd, because I know some Peregrines, and it's not a very common name, is it? My friend said it couldn't be the same ones, because this woman was married to a colonel type who lived near Worcester. I just assume you didn't talk about me to your friends. Who would you take me for, darling? I just said, no, it can't be the same ones. My friend said he's supposed to be a regular colonel blimp. <laughs> uh, you can tell them better than that, eh? <laughs> and if my wife had written a book, I should be the first to know about it, wouldn't I? Well, I suppose you would. And let's not waste time on trifles. I've not seen him some time now. I heard the other day. He hadn't been too well. I hope he's all right. Ah, Peregrine, uh, how do you like being the husband of a celebrity? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, it's no good, old boy. The secret's out. It's in today's telegraph. Amazing for a book of poetry to get reviews like that. Selling like hotcakes, they tell me. Peregrine, forgive my butting in. I say, I have Henry Dashwood lunching with me. He heard you were here. He'd so much like to meet you. Who's Henry Dashwood? Good Lord, what do you do with yourself down in the country all the time? Henry Dashwood, only about the best critic we've got. He wrote a wonderful review for your wife's book in The Spectator. Come along, old man, you can't disappoint him. Henry, this is Kathleen Hamilton's husband, Colonel Peregrine Henry Dashwood. How do you do? I'm delighted. Is Mrs. Peregrine in London by any chance? I should so much like to meet her. Uh, my wife doesn't like London. She prefers the country. Oh, pity. She wrote me a very nice letter about my review. I was completely bowled over by her book, you know. It's fresh and original, very modern, without being obscure. Yes, I suppose it is. She seems as much at home in free verse as in classical metre. In fact, I should go so far as to say that some of those short lyrics of hers might have been written by Landor. Really? But what makes the book so outstanding 
is the passion that throbs in every line. Naked, earthy passion. Of course, deep, sincere emotion like that is completely tragic. Oh, my dear Colonel, how right Heine was when he said that the poet makes little songs out of great sorrows. You know, now and then, as I read and reread those heart-rending pages, I thought of Sappho. Well, it's jolly nice of you to be so nice about my wife's little book. I'm sure she'll be delighted. Idiot. Colonel Pedigree, is it? I wonder if you remember me. Of course. The Duke of Haverhill. 